morning, everybody, and welcome to High Heat. You got it on this busy afternoon, the, tw or the morning, I should say, on the 29th of June, 2023. We got a good crew today. Joy's in the house, of course, with Rich and Tim Schultz, and we'll get Lana in here in a minute as uh, we got a lot to, uh, you know, really sort of unpack after a busy Wednesday in baseball, both on the field and off the field. The on the field first, and that, of course, is the perfect game as we uh, continue and get ourselves going on this Thursday morning. What a job by Herman. Boy, he is something else. And he can be very, very, di you know, he is a weird pitcher. One day he doesn't have it. He's around the plate a lot. He doesn't have phenomenal, phenomenal velocity. So that is why those last two outings were bad. But last night he was sharp as attack, loved his curveball. And obviously 27 up, 27 down as Herman, only the 24th perfect game in Major League history, fourth in Yankee history, set down the A's at the Alameda as the Yankees win 11 0. Some highlights if you somehow have missed. Uh, on this Thursday morning, you're going to see some things early in the game here. And he got in trouble on only two three-ball counts. We'll show that to you momentarily. Uh, I think this might be the first one to Ryan Noda on three and one. Uh, there's that ball three. And then, of course, he got out of that inning, uh, got out of the at bat with, uh, you know, um, uh, did he strike him out? I think he did in a huge spot. Noda's been a guest on this program. Then a little later on, a very good play by Rizzo at first base. This was in the fifth inning. I believe on a on a 3-1 ball was hit hard. Rizzo made a very very nice play, and of course Amon covered the bag. These perfect games, very very tricky. You can't make a mistake. A lot of pressure on the defense. They got to make every play, and away we go. Here's a uh, another three and one scenario here later in the game in the eighth, and a great job by throwing three straight curveballs to get out of the to get out of the at bat. The ground to the third base. Three curveballs in a row on three and one. When he's pitching a perfect game in the bottom of the eighth inning, he didn't lay a fastball in there. He laid the curveball in there, but he got the strikes. And then in the ninth, the three straight outs, Volpe there, a fly ball to Bader out in center field, makes the catch with the two hands. And then, of course, the uh, ground ball to third again where Donaldson makes the play, the XA. And there's the perfect game by Herman. Very unlikely that he did it. Uh, you know, he's coming off two bad starts. You figure he had a good start in him. He can be very, very effective. Uh, you know, he's one of those guys you get a little nervous in a real big game because he's around the plate a lot. And, you know, and he, when he's a little off, he can get tattooed. But uh, certainly not last night. An excellent, excellent performance. And as Paul O'Neill once said when he caught the last out, we'll show you a little later, with Wells, nothing more nerve-wracking than having to make that play to end a perfect game uh, when the ball is hit to you. And Donaldson had a couple plays he had to make. Volpe had a play he had to make. Obviously, middle of the game with Rizzo. Yankees all excited. Off the bad game the day before, they come back and they score 11 runs. Stanton hits a home run in this game, which you like, too. It's a big single, and the Yankees abrupted and buried the A's. Let's see if they can uh, basically do a better job here and make sure they win the rubber game today at 3.30 in the afternoon. I thought the Yankees would win three straight against the A's and get themselves well over 500 again. That was not the case. It would be a crime if they lost two out of three. They go to St. Louis for the weekend, who, again, can't get out of their own way. So we see if the Yankees can win the day game today against the Athletics in that ballpark. 12,000 there last night. They have seen perfect games in that ballpark before, including Catfish Hunter against Minnesota in 1968. First perfect game, of course, since Felix, who got a break on the last strike call against Tampa. That was in Seattle a long time ago, too. It was 3-2 on the last strike with Hernandez, but he pitched a perfect game. And now, of course, Haman does. We'll get to that uh, a little later. Jeff Nelson's going to join us. That is the on-the-field activities as far as uh, last night is concerned, a big development there. The off-the-field is Steve Cohen, the Met owner, uh, did a little uh, how-do-you-do to the press uh, middle of the afternoon at City Field after the Mets had played a crisp game the night before and one going away against Milwaukee. And then they played uh, the game last night and lost. But, of course, in between, Cohen uh, talked to the writers who seem to have a lot of discussion about who the next boss is going to be, the president of baseball operations. They seem to want to go in that direction more than they wanted to go about, you know, you spent $350 million and you got a team that's, uh, you know, very close to the Nationals in last place in the NL East. Stearns, David Stearns, I think would be the first candidate uh, to get a job as the president of baseball operations. These two have never met, so if they hit it off, I would suspect that Stearns would be the guy, and then he would decide uh, the scenario with Epler and the scenario with Buck. I would be shocked 
if both don't come back. Stearns likes Epler, and, uh, you know, Buck's an excellent manager this year notwithstanding. I would think he would return, too. It's not fair for either one of them off the 101-win season a year ago. You're allowed, a, you know, a little bit of a hiccup after you have that great regular year that the Mets did. But the Mets are just not any good. Uh, that's, you know, they, 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 as he said, they hit that night, they can't pitch. They pitch that night, they can't hit. And their bullpen, same thing. They're just, you know, it's, it's one of those years, one of those first halves that they just can't click. Last night, a big base hit by Council, uh, which, uh, you know, put them in a tough way and lost the game 5-2. Council got the two-run single uh, in the eighth inning. The one thing I will tell you about the Mets, if, if uh, Yelich, I said Council is the manager. Yelich got the base hit. The one thing I will say, they used to hit over the middle. McNeil didn't get the glove down in time. The one thing I will say about the Mets, uh, we know they're not going to add any players. It, 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 and if you're a Kana or Marte or Robertson, one of those catchers, uh, I think that uh, you will be, and it's good for you, you'll be on uh, out of Vino, who knows? The Mets will make moves, and Buck was annoyed about a swing uh, who on a hit batsman in that eighth inning. But if you are, and he got ejected third time this year by Ron Colbert at first base, but if you're one of those three or four guys, uh, you will be traded at the deadline. I mean, that's just, uh, why not? I mean, go to a team to get a chance to win. If this continues where the Mets still can't get out of their own way, forget the division. If they're, you know, and the Marlins right now, 11 and 12 games over 500, they buried the Red Sox. If, in fact, you're the Mets and you're, you know, 9, 10 out at the wild card in four weeks, three weeks, you will be traded. And it's so there is to it. And the Mets will pay the money to get better prospects, as they did, of course, uh, this past week with Escobar going to the Angels. So uh, he will do that. Got to build up that farm system. But the Mets are a mess. I mean, that's just all there is to it. And the Padres are right behind them. Another bad loss last night in Pittsburgh. Blake Snell pitched well. Bullpen didn't. Hit batsman. Bob Melvin got thrown out of the game. Pirates erupted in the seventh inning and beat San Diego. San Diego can't do a thing. They're, three t three, they're a long way behind three teams. They're five or six games under 500. Poor Melvin is perplexed. Can't figure it out. Ejected last night. San Diego doesn't have any grinders. Uh, I mean, San Diego, their season is over, too. There's Melvin. Their season is over, too. They're not making the playoffs. I mean, that's just, let's, be, let's call it like we see it. I don't know what they're going to do at the deadline. I don't, they're not trading Soto. Although he's only got one year left, I'm not sure if they're going to give him $500 million. But, I mean, you know, again, the thing I would tell you is if you're, uh, you're thinking about spending a fortune in the wintertime, look at the Mets, who has spent a fortune. Look at San Diego, who spent a fortune. Now, both of them can't get out of their own way. Reds didn't. They're in first place. Rays never do. They're in first place. They got the best record in the sport. Arizona doesn't. They're in first place. Uh, the Orioles, you know, Kyle Gibson, really, not a fortune uh, there. You know, they're going to make the playoffs as well. You know, sometimes it's how you build the team, not how much money you spend. And that's just fact. I mean, uh, as far as offseason baseball is concerned. So there you have it. Uh, and then uh, so San Diego and the Mets in huge trouble. Great performance by Herman. 27 up, 27 down. That is so hard to do because you got to get a little lucky. Ball's got to be hitting the right spot defensively. Pressure late. You know, you're four behind, you're in trouble. Uh, the no-hitter to me is a little uh, nonchalant, little commonplace. The perfect game. There's only 24 in the history of this sport. Ah, that is something. Ah, that's what I like to see. What a job by Herman. That's where we begin on this busy Thursday. Here is Alana, who will take it away now as she joins us. Ms. Rizzo, how are you? Good morning. I'm good. Good morning. And let's uh, give a little bit of credit to uh, Kyle Higashioka, can we? We didn't even mention the catcher in this. Domingo Herman, yes, of course, a tremendous performance by him. He's the one that has control of the ball where he wants it to go, the location, of course, and ultimately has the decision on what pitch he throws. But Kyle Higashioka was behind the plate, and I think catchers don't get enough credit for what they do when it comes to no hitters and perfect games. But I don't want it to be just about Higgy in this. Let's talk about the great job that the Yankees defense did. It is so unbelievably difficult to throw a no-hitter and even more difficult to throw a perfect game. Obviously, there's only been 24 in the history of this great sport, but the Yankees defense had to be on point in this entire ball game. 71.1% 71 71 of balls in play turned into outs. That's the fourth best in the major leagues behind the Rays, the Brewers, and the Rangers. The Yankees' 984 fielding percentage ranks 22nd in the majors, so it's not the best in the world, but it was great last night, perfect last night, if you will. You have to think about how many times 
perfect games or no hitters have gone by the wayside because of a lack of defensive play. Just go back to June of 2010. I realized that this was an umpiring error with Armando Galarraga's perfect game. Could have been a perfect game. Jim Joyce obviously didn't call the right play that he should have called. He feels terribly about this, but again, Armando Galarraga's perfect game, not a perfect game because of this error on, a, on an umpiring call. And now Armando Galarraga is just not even in the game anymore, and it could have been a part of history. So you also have to think about June 2014, right? Clayton Kershaw on the hill going up against the Colorado Rockies. This could have been a perfect game. It wasn't an error there by third baseman at the time, Hanley Ramirez, ended up being Kershaw's no-hitter, the only no-hitter of his career. But for a future Hall of Famer, he could have had a perfect game. So let's give credit to the New York Yankees defense for the way that they played behind Domingo Herman last night. Kyle Higashioka putting down the right fingers or pushing the right button on the pitch com, whatever it is that the Yankees are using. But kudos to the Yankees defense for being in the right place at the right time, being able to keep the composure. I can't imagine the nerves and the anxiety that Josh Donaldson must have felt at third base knowing that he had to field that ball cleanly, get it over to Anthony Rizzo at first base to be able to complete the fourth perfect game in Yankee. Think about how old the Yankees are as a franchise. The fourth perfect game in their history, just the 24th overall. Think about the amount of games that have been played in Major League Baseball. So congratulations to them. And it just goes to show you that perfection can happen at any time. No hitters can happen at any time. Remember when Josh Beckett threw the no hitter back in 2014, Chris, this was after the fact he had thoracic outlet syndrome after the fact that he got traded from the Boston Red Sox to the Los Angeles Dodgers, people thinking that his career was over. I understand a no-hitter, not nearly the same as a perfect game, but you just never know when someone's going to take the ball and be absolutely no-hitter-ish or perfect on the hill. Yeah, 24 of them. I mean, I, I don't know how many no-hitters there have been, but boy, uh, you can basically remember name by name of the 24 of throwing a perfect games. Hernandez well, and Well, I can tell Turner you, I can. And Larson and Cohn. I can tell you one more thing, though. I have had the privilege of covering in, in person, covering seven no hitters in person at the ballpark. I have never wow. covered a perfect game wow. in person. So that just shows you how rare it is. Excellent. Well done. Good job there, Olano. Here's Jeff Nelson. He's next. He'll come by and say hello. Stick with us. Where I'm going in the sun.